Welcome back guys, JC here with yet another repair. If you don't already know, look in the description below. I'll leave you a link to my repair series of videos with many other helpful videos. In the past I've talked about replacing the transmitter module because as we all know sometimes they fry. And when we say transmitters fry, it's not actually the entire video transmitter. It's just the transmitter module. And uh, sometimes they can fry from well, if you fry one of these from uh, incorrect voltage or flip-flopping the power and ground wire, then yes, it's this part that's fried. And you'll have to replace usually like a diode or a voltage regulator, something like that. But if you power on the video transmitter without an antenna, um, as we all know, you're not supposed to do that and it will fry the transmitter. But it's not immediate. It's not either on or off. It, it kind of degrades it. So that's the case that I have right now. I was flying and my antenna broke off in flight. By the time I recovered this, it had been powered on so long without that, that antenna and uh, the quality is now degraded. And recently I've received a lot of questions along the lines of, JC, why do you do so many of these repairs? Why don't you just buy new parts? That's too much work. Well because this is a $50 video transmitter and this transmitter module was $11. So I'm going to take those $39 I'm saving right now and buy myself a new flight controller or maybe some new ESCs, or maybe I'll take myself out to dinner and have a few drinks, who knows. So the very first thing you want to do, well, this is optional, the SMA connector. I've already removed mine. Uh, this will make removing the transmitter module a little bit easier, so I recommend removing it, but it's not necessary. It's up to you. It was actually easy for me because, uh, like you guys have seen on all my other builds, I actually make my own SMA extensions, and I screw this into my top plate. Uh, because with this screw into the top plate it makes it impossible for this to break off the video transmitter. Accident avoidance right there. I'm going to get into how to pick out the transmitter module uh, in a minute after we remove this and also all the parts and tools I'm using will be in the description as usual so you can find everything you need there. So first I'm going to put this in my helping hands. We need to remove as much solder from all these uh, joints as we can. To do that I'm just going to cut, uh, I'm going to take a solder wick, cut the end off, get a nice fresh piece, take some solder paste or flux paste, my bad, put some on the end, might even put a little bit more right here, same thing on this side, and now let's remove as much of this solder as we can. Now let's flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. And as I'm doing this, I'm cutting the solder wick to get keep getting fresh pieces. Okay, I feel like I've removed enough solder from all of these joints. I'm going to put some more flux paste on. I'll take my hot air gun and ceramic tweezers and I'm just going to keep going in circles heating up both sides and every now and then kind of tap it with my ceramic tweezers and once it starts sliding I know it's ready to come off. Pull off any of these pads then the entire thing is now trash. Okay so now it's lifting up and there we go. I'm going to fast forward the video now and give everything time to cool off. Now let's take some flux remover, spray that off. Now going back to the solder wick, I'm just going to make sure that all the solder is removed off these pads. Now we got some nice clean pads. Now let's go to the new transmitter module. It's got a little bit of solder right here and another right there. So I'm just going to clamp this. Let's take the solder wick and remove this solder. Flip it around, do the other side. Now it's impossible to get all the solder off, but that's good enough. And by the way, you don't have to remove this. I'm just doing it because my video transmitter actually has a case 
and this won't fit inside the case unless I remove it. But you can leave it on. So now I'm just going to pry it off like that. And there we go. I'm going to clean this one last time real quick. Okay, now we can talk about what transmitter module you actually need. Because if you go back to the one we removed, in my case, this is a FX758. So I could just do a Google search for that and find the one that I need, which I've already done here. And you may have a different number. There's many different transmitter modules. Now, my other tip is if you can't find the same exact transmitter module, you really don't have to worry about it. The reason I say this is because most of them have the same exact pin layout, which is going to be ground antenna and then another ground, uh, channel 3, 2, and 1. Then on this side, we've got voltage in, then audio, ground, 5 volts, and another ground. I would say like 90% of transmitter modules have the same pin layout. So even if you can't find one that is exactly the same, chances are it's still going to work as long as the pin layout is the same. And I, you know, I've done this before. I can confirm that that does work. I've taken uh, Luminear transmitter modules off and put on one that came off of Banggood or Amazon, and it worked perfect. So I'll leave you some links in the description on where you can find some of these. If you ever forget how this goes back on, uh, just think of it this way. This is your SMA connector. Both of these are grounds. The one in the middle is signal. So you just want to find the antenna, which is right here, and then we have a ground on both sides. So this antenna pad is going to go just like this. There's different ways of uh, getting this started because that's the hardest part. Uh, you can try soldering it, but you know, with like uh, the wire solder. I'm actually going to use solder paste just to get it started. So I'll just put a little bit of paste right there, put a little more right there, and we're good. Now line this up the best you can. Holding this in place, I'm just going to heat up this solder paste, and it's going to turn into a solid. Do the same thing on the other side. Once you have this tacked down in place to where it's not going to move anywhere, um, you can continue with the normal, you know, wire solder. I'm just going to keep using the solder paste just because this stuff is easier to remove the next time I go to replace this transmitter module, uh, if I ever do replace it again. Now let's spray this off again, take your brush, clean it up, and there we go, good as new. So now I just got to put my little extension back on, I'm actually going to make a new one, but put it back on and let's test it. Alright, I borrowed one of my quads, disconnected the video transmitter I have on this one, I plugged this one in, uh, made a new extension for it, got wired up, so let's try it out. And it looks like we got video. So, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. OSD works. Video quality looks great. Especially considering I don't have any antennas on my receiver right now. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helped you out. I made a video a while back talking about how I saved so much money and can be able to afford so many parts. Well, this is a prime example of how. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.